Yes, I'm a queer man and I'm in love. Thank you very much. I'm excited. I've got a boyfriend. We've been together for four years. I love him very much. He's fantastic. He's probably the most homophobic person in my life. <laughs> Which is a bit odd. I'd have been caught by the man who sucks your dick, but it really throws you. <laughs> it feels kind of wrong. This is a funny bit that'll do. We'll be having a romantic moment. I'll look in his eyes going, I love you, man. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me. And he'll just pause and go, gay. <laughs> it gets me every time. As a queer man, I'm offended. As a comedian, I'm delighted. That's wonderful stuff. <laughs> You'll say crook shit all the time. The other day we were talking about what our wedding might look like if we ever got married. My boyfriend generally said that at our wedding, he wants me and him to face off in a gladiator-style fight and, direct quote, whoever loses is the woman. What the fuck? <laughs> Am I dating my high school bully? What the fuck is this shit? He's recently started calling me Big Fella. Don't like that. <laughs> Here he comes, bloody Big Fella! <laughs> He's also nicknamed my penis Cheryl. <laughs> Couldn't you call the penis Big Fella? That would be better for me. He said, no, Big Fella, I can't. And shush, Cheryl can hear you. <laughs> He's a 25-year-old professional circus acrobat. Yes, every time. Every time we're going, ooh. He must be pretty flexible. <laughs> People assume we're having crazy freaky circus sex, like he's doing backflips onto my dick and juggling my balls. We're sucking off the Ringling Brothers. I'm getting eaten out by an elephant. None of that is happening, okay? We're having nice, normal, boring gay anal sex, okay? Classic vanilla Christian gay anal sex. That's all we're doing. It's, it's missionary anal, okay, Melbourne? <laughs> Isn't that a weird, horny assumption to make about someone's sex life just based on the profession of their partner? Like, oh, you don't get a count, are you? Does he order your pussy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't get your teacher. Does she smack your little pop butt when you're naughty? <laughs> What's that? You don't get a cop? Does he beat you and use racial slurs? <laughs> oh. Easy on the cops, Tom. They're always good. <laughs> Any cops in? <laughs> good. <laughs> Makes for a better vibe. If you are a cop, you have to tell me. <laughs> no, you, no, you have to. It's the law. <laughs> He's a real sweet guy, my boyfriend. I don't want to give you the wrong idea. He's a sweetheart. He does sweet things for me. In November of last year, for example, uh, my boyfriend told me he was going to surprise me for my birthday by taking me horseback trail riding. Now, I love horses. I used to go horseback trail riding as a kid. I love Black Beauty. I had an imaginary horse that I used to play with in our backyard that I named Sapphire. <laughs> Gay. <laughs> Full stop. So it was a really sweet idea for my boyfriend. But we didn't get to go horseback trail riding at Good Friends in Melbourne because my boyfriend made a few inquiries and apparently the horseback trail riding establishment in question had recently introduced a rider weight limit policy. And apparently this was unacceptable. Okay, the lib was 110 kilos, I'm 120 kilos, I'm officially too fat to ride a goddamn horse. Sorry, hello. Do you, do you guys know horses? Are you familiar with horses, yeah? I've always been under the impression horses are pretty fucking sturdy animals, okay? They're big units, they're jacked, they're ripped, they work out every day's a leg day for a horse. Hello, too fat for a horse! For centuries, horses have been drawing carriages carrying around knights in shining armour. We literally measure shit in fucking horsepower. But apparently the soy boy beta 
ponies down a friendly Sam's Mahogany trail rides. These fucking Shetland cucks. These fucking blue factory rejects. Who they might be lugging my fat ass around. They went to HR. That's horses resources. And they said... I was furious, I called them up, I said, fuck your rules, get me a Clydesdale or something. Can't you pump one of them full of ivermectin or ketamine or... <laughs> what are the horses gonna do? They're not under the union. Just tell them to lift with their knees! <laughs> I told that joke through the Melbourne Comedy Festival. And a woman came up to after the show and said, Oh, if you're interested, there's a place in Dandenong that does plus size horse rides. <laughs> <laughs> and I can get you a discount if you'd like. I said, Thank you so much, but I'd rather kill myself. Thank you very much. <laughs> True story. <laughs> so, yeah, those are my big updates, everybody. Released a special, had gay sex with a witch, <laughs> fell in love, too fat for all. <laughs> it's, it's been a crazy couple of years. <laughs> I guess my other news is that last year I wrote and released a book. Anybody get my book? <laughs> <laughs> Two claps. Okay, you guys are people, you're, you're obsessed with me, okay? You've, there's a parasocial relationship forming here. And we need some space. <laughs> Down the front, was it you, sir? You, you got my, oh, thanks. Did you like the book? I did. Great. I got it on Kindle and uh, paperback. You got it on Kindle and paperback. That's odd. Because <laughs> <laughs> I gave you the paperback. Oh, and then you went and bought it on Kindle? No, I got it on Kindle. You're already on Kindle. Oh, right, and then I... Yes. Yes. Like now. <laughs> Yeah, right. And I gave it to you for free. God, I'm a legend. <laughs> Just like we rehearsed. Well done, mate. <laughs> You've already seen the show. Yeah. All right. Freaking me out a little bit now, but anyway. A funny old. Stop it. <laughs> Thanks, man. Nice to see you again. Man who I definitely remember. <laughs> well, if you haven't got the book, please do check it out, my friends. Uh, you might like it. It's called Spare. And, uh... <laughs> it wasn't released under my name. I wrote it for a friend. <laughs> no, the book is called I, Millennial, One Snowflake Screed Against Boomers, Billionaires and Everything Else. It basically lays out how my generation, the millennials, have been comprehensively fucked over by neoliberal capitalism when it comes to work, housing, privatisation, education, wealth and equality, the climate crisis. It explains how this class society we have is holding us out, is killing us all, and our only hope of a better, more democratic future is a left-wing populist revolution to bring about something akin to democratic socialism. Yeah, it's had a pretty big impact. <laughs> Have you guys been enjoying all the socialism lately? You're welcome. That's the Ballard Bump, baby! This guy knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, the book did nothing. It didn't end capitalism or make me any money. And it's fucking bleak, man. I don't know. I don't know about you. To me, last year was like really fucking, <laughs> really grim. Last year, I was like, I, I think we're actually going backwards now as a species. We're actually devolving. <laughs> back at war with Russia, Taliban are back in charge, the US and the West back again. War crimes in the Middle East, we're winding back abortion rights. The new Samsung Galaxy is a fucking flip phone. <laughs> and Channel 7 is doing Australian Idol. What the fuck is going on? We're Benjamin buttoning our way towards the apocalypse. <laughs> By the time it arrives, we'll have devolved into little babies wearing Vote for Pedro t-shirts. <laughs> Just shitting into our nappies and listening to Crazy Frog. Just... <laughs> 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 Going back 
backwards. And we're all becoming obsolete, right? I'm sure the big story of the past year, everything going to be outsourced to artificial intelligence. Absolutely everything outsourced to AI. Everything. I didn't write any of these jokes, guys. <laughs> this is all chat GPT. <laughs> anyway, what's the deal with kill all humans? <laughs> all right, that deserved more, to be honest. I did it when ChatGPT came out like every other comedian. I asked him to write me a few jokes for the show. It did not work out well. I think we have very different ideas about what constitutes satire, me and ChatGPT. Threw out some current events, see what it came up with, all right? It said, hey, Elon Musk, that guy's in the news all the time. Hey, ChatGPT, write me a joke about Elon Musk. This is what it gave me. Why did Elon Musk invent the electric car? To save the environment and to power his army of robots with renewable energy. <laughs> Fucking got him. <laughs> Roasted! You want some aloe vera after that sick burn, Elon? Woo! Dog shit. Thought I'd try geopolitics, rising tensions with China. That's a very big story. I said, hey, ChatGPT, write me about China, okay? That's what it gave me. Why did the Chinese man wear a red string around his wrist? so he could find his way back to his noodle shop. <laughs> yeah, not cool, bro. <laughs> All right, that's definitely racist, <laughs> but I'm not sure why. <laughs> it sounds like it was written by a guy who wants to be racist about Chinese people, but has none of the details. <laughs> yeah, bloody Chinese with their fucking red string in their shops, it's a disgrace. Why can they all get back in their hot air balloons and fuck off back to Antarctica? I've done no research. <laughs> Jim Lee gave me that joke, and then just a second later, this paragraph appeared underneath it. said, it's important to note that making a joke about an entire country can be considered offensive. <laughs> it's important to avoid telling jokes which demean a group of people based on their race, ethnicity, or culture. You just did the noodle shop joke, it's there. <laughs> It's like in the two seconds of three paragraphs, the chatbot was sent on a sensitivity training course, <laughs> reflected on its past material, held itself accountable, and pledged to do better in the future. Which is crazy. It means that this chatbot is more emotionally advanced than Ricky Gervais. Isn't that incredible? Oh, boom! I'm not going anywhere, you fucking robots! Yeah, Ricky Gervais, where's that now, eh? <laughs> During the World Playing the Stadium's Netflix special? What a piece of shit. <laughs> He's not on the corner recording a special for YouTube. <laughs> I win. The most offensive response I got was this. I said, hey, ChatGPT, write me a joke about Tom Ballard. I said, I'm sorry, I don't know who Tom Ballard is. 